the psychedelic experience is an extremely old part of uh, the smorgasbord of human experiences on this planet. In fact, the emergence of human consciousness and the emergence of an awareness of the properties of these biodynamic alkaloids scattered throughout a number of plant genera uh, may be nothing less than the same thing. We know that uh, the arboreal primates of Africa at a certain point in the past, and people of good will differ on exactly when, came under pressure from an advancing phenomenon of desertification of the African continent. And at that time, new lifestyles, new adaptations had to be put in place. The arboreal canopy uh, dwelling lifestyle of these primate tribes had to be put aside. They descended to uh, ground level they abandoned vegetarianism in favor of an omnivorous diet and their already highly evolved system of signaling became even more evolved as they uh, took to hunting and preying upon herds of ungulate animals that were evolving in this grassland situation uh, in response to the same set of environmental pressures that were forcing the primates out of the trees. Uh, Roland Fisher did work showing that visual acuity is increased if uh, small amounts of psilocybin are given to graduate students. Psilocybin in uh, doses that are sub-threshold for uh, the triggering of uh, psychological changes. And in fact, he made the point to me when he told me about this, that this was a clear instance of a drug allowing a, a being, a person, to have a uh, truer picture of reality than if they had not ingested the drug. But Fisher, who was a psychologist, never drew the, the uh, conclusion regarding what the consequences of such an increase in visual acuity would be on the lifestyle and uh, adaptive skills of an animal. It's very clear in the same way that if you have a plant in your diet which uh, stimulates or challenges your immune system, that will increase your adaptive advantage. It's very clear that the presence of a biodynamic steroid or alkaloid which increases visual acuity will also have a tremendous impact on uh, the adaptive uh, strategy and the success of that strategy in a given animal. So uh, it's possible to suggest that once uh, psilocybin was established in the food chain, those primates that uh, utilized it quickly became the dominant and then the exclusive form. Well, now, how did this, uh, how did this psilocybin enter the food chain of these primates? Very simply, because it was uh, coprophytic meaning it grew in the manure of these ungulate animals, so that once the ungulate animals became uh, a food source and a focus of interest and attention of these primates, they could not help but notice as they tracked and followed these herds that uh, the mushroom was thrust upon their uh, attention. If any of you have observed Strophaeria cubensis, which is the species I'm speaking of, growing in the tropics, you know that it is quite an astonishing natural object to come upon in any environment. Uh, I've seen them the size of dinner plates in the Amazon, and they have a very rich golden color, and they rear their uh, 
heads above uh, the surrounding grasses in the meadowland situation. In fact, they actually look like small fleets of flying saucers that have come in and settled on the grass. Uh, to this day, baboons have the habit of, uh, baboons are also primates of this grassland environment, they have the habit of rushing over to uh, cow pies and turning them over and picking up bugs and uh, searching for protein in this way. So it is no great leap of faith to suppose that very early on they would have uh, these primate animals would have noticed the presence of the mushroom directly in their path and being omnivorous they would have eaten it and first in small experimental doses, doses which confer increased visual acuity, that would have established a selective reinforcement loop in favor of those animals with a taste for mushrooms as opposed to those animals without such a taste, very quickly they would have bred out the other preference and uh, very far-seeing monkeys would have been established. <laughs> the next level of the argument requires a somewhat uh, greater leap. It has to do with the fact that at increased doses the psilocybin in these mushrooms seems to activate uh, the language forming centers of the brain, Broca's area or uh, the ceruleus, it isn't clear, but what is clear that experientially these things are catalysts for language and that from the signifying, uh, or I'm sorry, from the signaling repertoire of these primates to the act of signification is a, a symmetry break a leap into the unknown that it is reasonable to speculate was actually triggered by the presence of these biodynamic plants in the diet. Once that happened, there is the establishment of a set of associations. The cow, the mushroom, which in the mind of uh, these creatures, I'm sure that the mushroom was thought of as coming from the cow because after all the manure came from the cow and it seems to be just a, a seamless web of associations. So the cow, the mushroom and lying ineffably behind that the experience of the tremendum, the experience of an ineffable mystery that now some hundred thousand or thirty-five thousand years later is no less mysterious uh, in spite of the fact that we have made an immense intellectual conquest of the world in which we live. We extend our metaphors of explanation to the most distant stellar objects and down into orders of magnitude of the physical universe, many levels beyond which we can perceive with our unaided senses. Nevertheless, this tremendum that these early primates contacted remains precisely that, a mysterium, a transcendental mystery that beckons across the epigenetic landscape of human culture and organization. And uh, some of you who have heard this lecture uh, or these ideas before know that it is my opinion going beyond Gordon Wasson that this really lays the basis for uh, the genesis of religion. Religion begins in the notion of the holy. The holy is another way of indicating the felt presence of the tremendum and the early goddess religions of the of the Middle East were essentially cattle religions. There are people in this audience who have done tremendous work on the etymology of these languages showing how these words and roots uh, can be traced back into a kind of convergence where the mystery and the mushroom are seen to be one. So 
this means that in spite of the um, prejudices and intellectual predilections of Western man, which are essentially pretensions that have uh, arisen in the uh, dimension created by ignorance, the dimension of ignorance created by the Judeo-Christian attitude toward nature, which sees it essentially as uh, something to be exploited rather than uh, integrated or, uh, or made a resonant part of the psyche, in the light of that ignorance, the connection to the vegetable world has fallen away. Although even as late as the 19th century, uh, mythographers and mythologists like F. Max Mueller and Fraser were talking about the vegetation goddess as, as a kind of archetypal category into which all of these early religions could be subsumed then uh, in the 20th century this idea fell into uh, disrepute.